Welcome to my channel, detailing events throughout the decades, 1986, Pan America Flight 73, hijacked, on 5th of September 1986, Pan American Flight 73 was hijacked, while on the ground at Karachi, by four armed Palestinian men of the Abu Nidal organization. The aircraft had 360 passengers on board, and had just arrived from Bombay. The Pan America flight had originated in Mumbai, and had stopped at the Karachi airport for a scheduled stopover. 109 passengers disembarked at Karachi. The first busload of passengers boarding from Karachi had barely reached the aircraft standing, when the hijacking began to unfold. Two hijackers, dressed as Pakistan airport security, drove up to the aircraft in a van fitted with a siren and flashing lights, and rushed to the ramp, firing shots into the air. Another two hijackers joined the first two, one was carrying a briefcase full of grenades. Two Kuwait airline staff who were working on the aircraft at the time were shot and killed. Shots were fired at the feet of a flight attendant, forcing him to close the aircraft door. Flight attendant, Shireen Pavan, was out of sight, and relayed the hijack code to the cockpit crew, who quickly exited the aircraft via the inertial rail escape device. Because the pilots had exited the aircraft, this immobilized the aircraft. The four hijackers were identified as, Zaid Hassan Abd al-Latif Saifarini, Jamal Saeed Abdul Rahim, Muhammad Abdullah Khalil Hussain Ra'il and Muhammad Ahmed al-Munawar. Pakistani authorities identified another accomplice, Wadud Muhammad Hafiz al-Turki, who was arrested a week later. After seizing control of the aircraft, the lead hijacker, realized the cockpit crew had escaped, therefore he would be forced to negotiate with officials. First class and business class were ordered to go towards the back of the plane. Passengers at the back of the plane, were ordered to go towards the front. The aircraft was nearly full, so passengers had to sit down in the aisles, galleys and near the exit doors. At around 10 in the morning, Saferini went through the plane and arrived at the seat of Rajesh Kumar, a 29-year-old Indian American, who had recently been naturalized as an American citizen. He ordered him to come to the front of the aircraft, kneel at the front doorway, and face the front of the aircraft, with his hands behind his head. Saferini negotiated with officials, stating that if the crew were not sent back on the plane within 15 minutes, Kumar would be shot. Shortly after, Saferini became impatient with the officials, grabbed Kumar and shot him in the head, in front of witnesses. Saferini heaved Kumar out the door and onto the tarmac below. He was quickly placed into an ambulance, but was pronounced dead on the way to the hospital. Nirta Banat was ordered to collect the passports of all passengers, which she did. She believed that passengers with American passports would be singled out by the hijackers. Nirta and other flight attendants proceeded to hide some of the American passports under seats, and dump the rest down the rubbish chute. Michael John Thexton a British citizen was ordered to come to the front of the plane, where he came face to face with Saferini. He ordered Thexton onto his knees. Saferini told officials that if anyone came near the plane, he would kill another passenger. The hijacking continued into the night. Near Jabanat, secretly removed a page from her manual, that explained all the procedures for the 3R aircraft door, and placed it inside a magazine, which she handed to the passenger sitting near the door. She asked them to read the magazine and then close it up again. The page included information on how to open the exit door and deploy the slide down to the ground. At 9 p.m., the auxiliary power unit shut down. All lighting went off and emergency lights came on. Passengers in the front of the plane, were now ordered to go to the back, while passengers at the back of the plane, were ordered to go to the front. A hijacker near one of the doors, said a prayer and then aimed to shoot at an explosive belt another hijacker was wearing. He had intended to cause an explosion massive enough to kill all the passengers and hijackers on board. Because the cabin was so dark, he missed, causing only a small detonation. Hijackers then began shooting their weapons into the cabin at passengers. They attempted to throw the grenades, but because it was so dark, the pins on the grenades were not pulled fully creating only small explosions. It was the bullets that had created the most damage in the cabin.
a flight attendant at an exit door managed to open it, but the slide did not deploy. Several passengers and crew jumped out of the door and onto the tarmac below. The passenger sitting next to the exit door, successfully opened the door, and the slide deployed. Several more passengers were able to escape. 20 passengers were killed and over a hundred more were injured. Pakistan quickly sent in the Pakistan Army's Special Services Group Commandos. On July 6, 1988, five Palestinian men were convicted in Pakistan for their roles in the hijacking and the murder of the passengers. They were sentenced to death at the time, but these sentences were later changed to life in prison. According to reports, Saferini was handed over to the FBI in September 2001. Libya was accused of sponsoring the hijacking. In June 2004, a volunteer group of families and victims from the incident, worked towards a memorial for those who were killed, and to seek the truth behind the attack. On April 5, 2006, the law firm Crowell and Mooring announced it was filing a civil suit in the U.S. District Court, seeking compensation, plus unspecified punitive damage from Libya. As of September 2015, 700 million that Libya gave to the U.S. aid to settle claims, had not been distributed to the families of the victims who were Indian passport holders. The aircraft was renamed after the hijacking, and was then known as Clipper New Horizons. Flight attendant, Nir Jabanat received India's highest peacetime award for bravery, and Ashok Shaka was awarded for her efforts in saving passengers during the hijacking. Forever remembering those passengers who were killed in the hijacking, may you never be forgotten. Thank you for watching and learning about events throughout history. Please subscribe to my channel, to view other events which have taken place throughout the decades.